Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you guys doing today? It's going to be a very, very interesting show this morning, especially if you're reading the caption above, okay? And it's more than likely going to be a very controversial show at the same time, right? Especially saying that, you know, I'm a person and, of course, you know, I believe in God. I believe in fairness. I believe in a few things. And definitely, I worship my God, Jehovah God. So, it is a little funny that I would put a statement like that above. And I want you to read it very, very carefully. And, right? Especially before commenting. Read it very carefully. Right? All right, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. And I hope that all is well. I hope everybody is okay. I hope everyone is blessed. And I hope that whatever problems you got today, God give you the strength to hold it up, handle it, and deal with it. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, I've been doing a lot of research, right? And going over a lot of things, I realized something. And it's something that I think we should all know, but we all kind of avoid it. Okay? Buenos dias. Buenos dias, Elizabeth. Right? And it is something that we all tend to avoid because, well... None of us wants to take bad name. Yeah? Nobody wants to say, hey, you know what? This is we fucked. Right? So, I've been hired. Kind of a pro bono case. Took it up on you know, my own behalf here. Right? To represent the devil today. In a particular argument. Right? And I believe it's a very fair and logical argument. If we were in court and the devil had his day in court, right? The devil would be able to voice his opinion. But I had an experience in court the other day where even the judge seemed to side with one side over the next. But I'm watching, right? And it has come to. The realization, I've come to the realization that there is a very high probability that the argument that the devil is making is a valid argument. And his argument is as stated. Right? This is the devil's argument. The devil said, since the beginning of time, or at least since the creation of human beings, he has always had to take a bad rap. Okay. Okay. So we ask him why. He says, well, every bad thing that is ever done on this planet, everybody blaming he. The man says he can't even walk in a garden without being harassed anymore. The man even said people calling him a snake. He said, but he was born an angel. He was never a snake. So it's funny, funny things. Because the reality is, once again, the man making valid arguments. The man said, I'm a spirit. I'm a supernatural force. I don't have hands. I don't have a mouth. Skunt, I ain't even got a brain as you know a brain. To this day, nobody has ever painted the right picture of him. Because nobody has ever seen him to know him. Makes sense. But yet, he says, every bad thing that goes on, everybody blaming he. So, he told me he would like to prove it is not him. So I said, okay. Explain. So the devil says, God gave everybody free will. And he said, everybody. Everybody God give free will to, you know. He said, the angels had free will. Or they can't make a choice. He said, likewise, human beings have free will. 
He said it is grossly unfair that he has to suffer the consequences of his personal choices as well as suffer the consequences of our bad personal choices. So sitting down, you know, drinking a cup of tea, chatting with him. I said ahead, continue. And he goes on to say, he said, first let's start with the fruit story. It's not he thought the woman go and love up with a snake between her leg and when the husband come, she eat the apple, give you an apple and say, this is how it all happened. The devil say, I never tell God for put a big long anaconda inside the garden with the woman. What did he expect? So I stopped for a second and I think about it. And I said, all right, possibly a valid point. Because I know I don't know Eve. Any of you ever met you? Nobody don't know the character of this woman. She could have been a wicked woman. Who knows? So the man said, after that happened, and the woman take the snake. Well, God didn't want to take the blame for creating the snake and putting the snake in the garden with the woman, which was a bad idea from the start. So God left the man for blame me. The devil done said, after the day, the man get jealous and the woman had to wear clothes. She couldn't walk around the garden naked anymore for sake that a snake go in the hole. Might sound like a funny story, yeah? Right? So the devil said, so the only reason why you asked that wear clothes is because of jealousy. The man jealous of the snake. Because he wondered why the snake got, got a mind of its own and could move and he own, could only jump up at certain time in the day. So the man felt away. After that now, the man decided to left the garden and pull the woman out the garden. This is his this is his story, right? Not me. Okay. Because the devil does need an attorney at some point in time. Right? So the man left the garden because he didn't want the woman to interact with the snake anymore. Right? He said when he tell God about God's bad decision, God said he's God, he all know him. Right? It's time for, time for chase you out. You want to commit problem now, Satan. You telling people I make a bad decision. Satan like, yeah, bye. One, you give them free will. Two, you put the snake in the woman's garden. And three, you tell, you tell she she can eat any fruit off of any tree. What really going on with you, God? This is the problem. So, at least this is his story. Yeah? Might sound funny. Funny, funny thing, this passing joke, though, right? Next, he said, Then them two gone and make picnic. He said in the picnic, just as what is them. He said, oh my God. He said, why everybody chilling on the outside of the garden now? Because they can't go back in the garden because the garden full of snake. And no man don't want the woman around any snake. No snake like dog. Eh, eh, no snake to snatch your fruit. Mm -hmm. Right? Then no Satan was climbing up a cherry tree. But then again, who, who knows? Right? It's a funny thing. This is his story, not me. Okay. Now, they dip on the outside of the garden. The jealous man and the unfaithful woman, right? Go and make two picnic, make a couple picnic. But we can talk about two of them. One named Cain and one Noe Abel. Right? You never wonder why one named Cain? Because after the snake incidents, Adam know. He always had to have a good cane with him. Because the minute he cane falls short, a snake again for you woman. No more garden, you know. Snake their garden. Snake their backyard, you know. People protecting themselves from snake now. So, so, he, so he, you know, so Adam make a cane. And he make one that you know able. Right? So he said, now these two retards, he said, 
they live in life. One of them getting plenty greens and the next one getting animal. So he said, all right. Both of them gone one day now for sacrifice to God. He said, they may not even realize. What could you sacrifice to God to make God happy? God create everything. You give me fruit. You can give me goat. Both of you are stupid bad. And at the same time that they both stupid. One get jealous. Or the next one. And God and go kill. The only man that was able. He kill him. Okay, I can't take this car right now. I'm in court. Good. Right? So, funny thing. Said so after after the killing. Cain and I didn't even want to take the blame fully, even though Cain was guilty. Cain gone and tell God that the devil make me do it. So now Cain want to run away from his own sin. So Cain decide now, I can do the same thing my mommy and my daddy do. When daddy had a problem in the garden with the snake, daddy move out of the garden and keep mommy away from the snake. Now I got the problem here where I just killed my brother. So how am I going to deal with this problem? Wait, mommy and daddy teach you how to deal with the problem. You run from it. So Cain now pick up himself. And God scunt. Don't know where he gone. But he gone somewhere. Right? And here's the funny thing. The devil says, this is where it gets very interesting, Mr. Snow. I said, why? He said, because in their written version of history, something corrupted there. And I ain't got nothing to do with that. I said, what are you talking about? He said, Mr. Snow, if Cain goes somewhere else and start the family, who did Cain sleep with? Was it his sister? So the devil said, Mr. Snow, it's logic. God don't want you sleeping with your sister. So if Adam and Eve, the way it was, was the true story, and Cain and Abel gone out there, where did the other woman come from? And if Cain ran away from the original place where his family and tribe was to go to a different area, where did the other woman come from in the different area? Just ask it. The devil said, listen, Mr. Snow, you got sense? You got sense, Scott? You got it? Or you don't got it? Right? He said, you got it? Or you don't got it? I said, bye, right, right now, I, I, I ain't even know, man. I ain't even know, cause right now I got to question everything, every, everything I got to question. I don't even know if I learned from read, right, based on why I hear and hear. That the thing got you, you know, thing got you stupidy for a minute. He said, well, this is the problem. He said, because after the everything God, everything God, yeah, Wendy, exactly. Adam and Eve had to have more kids. So are you telling me that initially we are all products of inbreeding? Think about it. Think about it. Think about it carefully. Man, like I said, you know, I'm just telling you the story, right? I ain't really defending it or nothing yet. I'm telling you. Tell you what he tell me. Right? So he said, So that was part of the problem. He said, So now somehow we got another issue coming up. 
I said, what's the next issue? He said, we're going to fast forward a little bit. I said, all right, let's fast forward. He said, there was this really, really old guy named Methuselah. Right? And Methuselah ended up leading to the lineage of Noah. He said, now this Noah guy, this Noah guy had some good contacts. He had contacts with the big boss. And they hatch a plan. Right? Because the big boss, he got the issue. He don't realize how far he mistake on God. Mm -hmm. He said, because first the snake story, an unfaithful woman, a stupidy man, making stupidy children who killing the killing each other for nothing. Now the stupidy one somehow go into the wilderness, meet a woman that didn't exist, make picnic with a non-existent woman, and farm a nation of people that are so destructive. That the amount of destruction that they have, you can only blame a supernatural force. And then they said, it's other angels like myself come and broken up the world. He said, so God and he by Noah, they had your plan. But I couldn't talk. He said, I don't tell you. I ain't got mouth, I ain't got hand, I ain't got thing, right? It's only today, I, I'm lucky enough that somebody could hear me. Right? So he said, they had your plan. They said this world is getting overpopulated with people that they don't agree with. So I said, hey, hey, tell me more about this plan. They said the plan was COVID-19. I mean, it was a flood. It was a flood. Sorry. Different type of disaster. Said it was a flood. So they said with this flood, they can kill off all the bad people. And leave all the opportunity for the one they had the contacts. Right? Because remember back then you ain't got plane and things like this, right? So they said they had to plan. And they start build this big boat thing. Right? Then originally now. They said two of every animal got to go into this thing. But the devil said something is wrong with that. I said, what do you mean something is wrong with that? He said, God created everything, correct? To your knowledge, he said, yes, correct. God created everything. He said, can you list the names of all of the animals, Mr. Snow, that God has created? I said, well, I can't list the name of all, but I can list the name of a few. He said, okay. He said, Mr. Snow, do you know mathematics? I said, I know it, but I don't know it as good as Guyanese parliamentarians because they have a different type of mathematics. He said, don't worry with them scum to them, 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 them thing, them thing is, them thing is, they got math better than God. That's only, only God I know that has pulled something out of nothing. So he said, don't, don't worry with them. He said, he said, we got to use real mathematics. Right? The ones the Arabs created from back in the day. That is the mathematics we have to use. So I said, all right. He said, China later adapted it. Greece adapted it. It made sense. So I said, all right, good. We can use standard mathematics. He said, all right, good. Mr. Snow, if this building is 300 cubits, 100 cubits, this and this and this and this. He said, first you got to tell me what is a cubit, Mr. Snow. I said, well, a cubit is the measurement from here to here. He said, yeah, but what if you hand bigger than the next man hand? He cubit bigger than you own. He said, that come back down to the same problem with the snake and Adam. One snake be bigger than the next and one man get jealous. 
right? So he said, Mr. Snow, for argument's sake, we can say a cubit is about a foot and a half to two foot, roughly around there. So if you got 300 cubits, let's say two foot, you got 600 feet. If you got 100, you got another 200 feet by whatever. He said, good. He said, it's a lot of space, right, Mr. Snow? I said, yeah, it's a lot of space. He said, now, Mr. Snow, do you understand how to build a boat? I said, no, nah, but I could watch a YouTube. He said, well, they, they watch YouTube back then too, Scott, because nobody didn't know how to build a big, big boat like that before. But they had the knowledge. Right? So, they had to learn it somehow. He said, well, Mr. Snow now, think about the weight. Think about the space inside. Think about all the rafters. Think about all of the supporting wood and agents and framework and structure that had to be built within this boat. And then, think about how much area space to take away from there now. At least 30% of space inside the boat would have been taken up by actual structure to hold everything together. So I said, okay, sounding logical. Mathematically, it's sounding logical. If you put it on paper, it's going to sound logical. So I said, all right. Keep going. He said, now, Mr. Snow, I'm not going to name all the animals because there's over 10,000 species of animals. He said, but I'm going to name a few, Mr. Snow. And he start like this. He said, giraffe. He said, Mr. Snow, do you have any idea how much a giraffe weighs? How big a giraffe is? I said, well, it's, it, 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 it's pretty, pretty big. He said, good. Now you needed two of them. Minus that area space that they take up inside the boat. Okay? From the space that you have remaining. Remember, the man's still dealing with match, you know. Then he said, elephant. I jumped back. I said, Scott, this man naming all the biggest thing. We ain't gonna have space for nothing left here. Hold on. So he might ask me again. Mr. Snow. If we put two elephants there, how much space them two elephants taking? He said, but you got to take a decent amount of space. He said, now, Mr. Snow, if you're talking about two of every animal, there are multiple species of elephants. So at least eight, anywhere from eight to ten different elephants had to be inside the thing. Think about it. Mm -hmm. So all this time, you know, I just listening to the man's story. Then the man showing rhino, he showing hippopotamus. He said, by the time you're done with just a handful of land animals, there's no space left in the boat, even for them to shit. Uh -huh. He said, so, like I tell you, Everything start go chaos from since Cain, Cain time, you know. Everything just kind of flutter away. Flutter away. Think of what I'm telling you. Right? So he said, man. So, anyway, they say God and, and, and he home by put out two of every animal in there. He said, man, but I was there. I, by you know how big the thing would have had to have been for whole two to a heavy animal? Once again, mathematics. Common sense. He said so. The story got its own issues, Mr. Snow. However, he said their argument for flooding in the world is that the world is evil. Or, or messed up and into chaos and people were practicing all sorts of vile and everything else so everybody just said it was all because of me even though it's them own choice they choose to be wicked he said I never tell them be wicked 
Never once did I tell a human being to be a wicked person, Mr. Snow. He said, read the scriptures. Going back to Scott. Lo and behold, he never really told anybody to be wicked. He said, everybody got an option. He said, if God didn't want them to have an option, then why did he give them free will? And if he gave them free will, Mr. Snow, and the only thing they could have chosen from was God or God, then there would have never truly been an option. Hence, free will would have been a lie. So God created me, Mr. Snow. I, I feel, unfortunately, just to take the blame. But, but I don't understand it yet, so that's why I'm here. He said, we're going to go further now. If all the wicked people, and this is what he said, you know. He said, if all the wicked people, they get killed out in this flood. And only good people they left, which was God by Noah and his family. How come they became wicked again? And end up repopulating the earth till they all start fight for space and kill Mati. It's not our one family, Mr. Snow. He made a damn good point right there. I stopped and I said, ooh, this man making some sense here. For real. If Noah was the last one left with his family, and just, and, and all them hit the bottom must and everything else. Then his family would have had to breed generation after generation. They would have had to procreate. All of them would have been related to some point in time. So why were they killing each other for land and territory and all of this other things? He said, Mr. Snow, as you start to ask these questions, you will become just as hated as me in this world. He said, but don't worry, Jesus came to tell them it too, and they, they crucified him. He said, that's why he just remained where he dead. Nobody ain't seen he. He said, God's son come and they crucify him. I'm the devil. You know what they've been doing to me? You know how long they want to get their hands on me, Mr. Snow? Oh, so I said, yeah, you know what? Sounds kind of right. I'm like, I'm here and I want to shoot you. Just because of what I heard. He's like, you see? And I'm, and I'm trying to get an attorney. It's a little funny. Right, man. I said, but keep going. Your story you sound interesting, Mike. Say, keep going, keep keep going this morning. Satan, keep going. So Satan said, yeah. So, Mr. Snow, can you explain that one to me? If all of them is one family, how come they end up killing Marty for land? He said, Mr. Snow, I don't want to be a part of that family. That's a sometime-ish family. I said, well, I said, bye, you know what? You're absolutely right. Uh-huh. Even me, I watch my family. How many of y'all got family that to this day they fight in y'all for house and land? Think about it. Auntie, uncle, cousin, buddy, sissy, mama, type of thing. Fighting each other for house and land. Oh, Scott, all are we related to Noah? We got a problem. Anyway, devil story making sense. Can't say it's not making sense. It's making sense. If it don't make sense, tell me. I'm going to have to call you back in. Put it down in front of everybody. And have this discussion with him. The problem is if I call you back in, he doesn't just visit my house. He visits everybody else's house. Because he wants to see you firsthand. So you hear it from him out. But some people ain't ready for them. Right? Right? It's a funny thing. Because we get so used to blaming the devil for all of our own wickedness. That we don't see that we are the devil in disguise. Know what is going on. Right? So we continue. So he said they start kill each other. 
for land, for everything. He said so. Time continued to go. And people spread out further and further on the planet. And he said, but Mr. Snow, something there is wrong too. I said, what do you mean? He said, you ain't understand that the Bible you read only talks about one part of this world. I said, what are you talking about? He said, look at the map for the Bible. Look at where the Bible is talking about all history happening. He said, Mr. Snow, God created a whole planet. Why is there only history in this one little spot on the planet? He said it comes back down to the same Skonto story with the boat and how two of every animal can fit in there. He said all of that is a mathematical improbability. It will more than likely never happen because you cannot fit a hundred pounds of sugar into a one pound bag. He said unless God shrank them. Sense over nonsense, right? So I said, continue. You're making sense, by You're making sense. Because realistically, why is all history only in one part of the world? God did create a whole world. What happened to the animals on the next side of the world? Because I damn well know a monkey from the Amazon didn't swim across the Atlantic to go to the Middle East to go and hop inside Noah's boat. Something missing here. This is all the devil saying. He's saying, listen, man, I, I ain't telling you to believe me, man. I'm just telling you to ask questions. Right? He said, because at the end of the day, he want the truth just as much as we want the truth. So I said, fair enough. Let's search for truth. Oh, boy. Tell the man the wrong thing, though. I said, I said let's search for truth. I said, all right. He said we're going to jump. You can start jump fast now. He said, and he wants watching a man named Samuel. He didn't walk in for you by God. Right? He didn't walk in for you. I said, and I really liked Samuel. He said Samuel was a blessed man. He said Samuel also ended up Becoming one of the most frustrated men on the planet at that time. I said, explain. He said, well, God, just like Noah, God selected Samuel to carry out an errand. Samuel was to be a prophet. And Samuel did many, many things for the people that supported their God at that time. He said, but then look, the people themselves yet again were wicked again. Because though Samuel was prophesying to them, performing miracles on behalf of God Almighty, the people still did not fully trust the man decisions. They wanted to live like other people. So then I said, what do you mean live like other people? He said they wanted to live like the people that, that Cain went and started making picnic with from the start. You know the non-existent people that were never mentioned in the Bible that somehow Cain went and made a family with? Those people. I said, oh, okay, them again. I said, but weren't they killed out in the flood? He said, that's my point. If they were originally killed out in the flood and everybody was one family and one family turned into the whole nation in the world, then how did more wicked people come unless the wickedness was inside of all of them from the start? I said, all right, continue. Making sense. So he said, even though Samuel told them what they needed to hear, they didn't want the Scott. He said, them, them wanted to be like everybody else. 
He said instead of them using their free will to be leaders, they used their free will to be followers. They saw other people with king, they wanted king. So Samuel was forced now to find them a king. He said, and then it got more worse because there should have never been a king except God himself. But yet God allowed it. He said, why God allowing all this contradiction? Something wrong. But he allowed it. So Samuel went and found Saul. A handsome gentleman. Strapping. Perfect to be a king. Natasha, that's because God has told you. Man does not live on bread or water alone. But man does live upon the utterances of the Father. Just listen to the story. It's funny as hell. But so, so true. So the Israelites at that time. They wanted a king. They wanted a leader. They wanted to be like everyone else. So they went and sent Samuel for bring Granger. I mean for bring Saul. And when Saul show up now, you got to understand, Saul was proper. He played proper. All the time he played proper. And he let it get to his head. And then Saul had his own instances. Where he was both good and bad. To where he even went against. The same God. That allowed Samuel. To find him to be the king. So God started turning favor away now. God said I don't love you no more Saul. I don't love you no more. You broke in my heart. And then God said now. Samuel boy I got another job for you boy. We got to remove this skunt and we got to put another one there, right? These body them got me looking bad. So Simon said, all right, God, I got to do this thing, then I can go do it then. Who you going to pick now, God? God said, well, man, first, first, first I picked this one and I thought this one was all right. Well, we're going to go with something that's completely opposite to this one now. Right? We went with a big, strong, up, oh, handsome, handsome one. Let we take a scrawny, jankalar looking one and turn it into something great. Boom. Enters the story of David. Right? Good. So now, David come on the scene. But David, you know, first class, new employee, you know, what if I make a difference? What if I make a difference? Funny, funny thing. Right? So the devil telling me, I said, so how the whole story with David and Goliath happened? Because now you got me interested. He said, all right, bye. So this, so this is what, so this is what, what I can tell you, right? Okay. He said, this is, this is what I can tell you. I said, yeah, explain the whole David and Goliath thing to me. He said, all right. He said, you know what shit luck is? He said, what do you mean? I said, man. You know, you, you never pull a stunt and you get true. I said, yeah, once or twice. He said, what well, does exactly what happened with David Scott? Right? That's exactly what happened with David. I said, nah, man, David killed a lion. David killed, you know, David killed a lot of things with his slingshot and stuff. He killed beer and thing. People, you know, story. He said, listen, man, 
David was in the wilderness. He found the damn beast, them dead. He, he hit it two times with the stone and tell people he kill it. And people believe it because them wasn't there for see. That was the closest thing to Instagram. They had at the time. The man bring the lion and he bring the dead. There and he said, look. He dropped two rock bonnet and say he threw the rock. But now when he get up to Goliath. Goliath was a jackass and David had sense. David stand with the sun behind me. So when Goliath go for watch, watch. Goliath couldn't see when the stone come. And the stone just barely catch the man in the right place. And he dropped down. He had a heart attack and dead. But people didn't realize. With such a big, massive body. Your heart works over time. So when he get hit, he, didn't, he never really get hit like that before, but he get hit by the stone. Same time, the light blind, he, he tripped back, he fell, he lashed his head. The big, big spear he had in his hand was the weight they hit him in the chest, triggered the heart attack, and Goliath dead. And yeah, David became the chosen one. Right? So now this is the problem. David don't take his claim to fame. But Saul couldn't kill Goliath because Saul, Saul didn't fight Goliath in the early morning with the sun behind him. Right? No, no, no. I am not the devil's attorney yet. The devil had to come and plead his story before I decide if I'm going to be or not. I'm just telling you what the client brought to me this morning. Right? And I thought it was very entertaining. So I said, let me share it. Right? Food for thought, by the way. Food for thought, ladies and gentlemen. Right? So anyway now, Saul see David getting up in rank. He said, watch out y'all human beings jealous, wicked and covetous. I said, what do you mean? He said, Saul had a daughter and he tell David marry daughter because well, Saul wanted to keep the star by close by. This is star by, you know. Who wouldn't want Amitabh Bachchan living in their house? Come on! So that's what Saul did. Saul sent his daughter out for marry Amitabh, I mean David, and bring David back home. Michelle Plato, listen to the story. I'm only explaining the devil's side of it right now because he doesn't have a voice. Right? Understand what they're telling you. By the way, I love my God, right? I just think that this is very interesting. And I think it's really, really cool food for thought. Also, how can you say it's sarcasm if you were never there? If your statement is correct, then the whole Bible can be sarcasm as well. Think about it. Who was there to prove it? The devil argument making sense though. How you fit all them animal in a small, small thing? The ark was not a woman. Sorry, bad joke. Right? Bad joke. Mom, forgive me. My daughters, forgive me. I just thought it was, you know, it sounded way funnier in my head at that moment until I said it out loud and I said, you know what, that was a bad joke and it shouldn't have been said. Right? But... Right? But it's funny because the devil's story making sense. So I said, all right, let me keep going. He said, so, all right, Saul, Saul, marry daughter to Amitabh, I mean, David. Keep David close by. But at the same time now, Saul realized David getting too strong in the house. He said, eh, eh, this thing can't work. So, Saul and David have to have a talk. At the same time, Samuel, like a scontrol now, come inside and telling Saul, Hey Saul, well you know, David is the one that got to replace you. Saul say, eh? Hold on, boy. Saul trip out. Saul start trying to kill David. But remember, Saul big and strong, plus he king. David can't play stupid either. David get murdered. David ain't a stupid one. David had enough sense to stand with the sun behind him when he faced Goliath. He was not going to rush Saul head on. 
right? Oh, trust me, Wendy, my church would be so funny. There would be, I guarantee, it'd be the most entertaining church in the world because it'd be the only church in the world talking truth. Full truth with common sense. Because I, I like ask questions, eh? I believe, you know, our question must have some sort of realistic answer. Right? Like I said, right? Oh, by the way, this stream is totally for fun. If, if you understand it's serious, then it's serious to you. If it's not serious, don't take it seriously. If you're a Christian, if you're an atheist, if you're a devil worshiper, please don't come and attack me. And in case you decide to attack me, did you see who one of my new clients potentially is? Don't make me send my client after you. Thank you very much. Right? Understand the difference. So we're going to go back to the client story. Right? So now Saul, jealous of David. Right? Saul, chase David out the place. David, David run over to the Philistines. Right? As David run over to the Philistines, you also have to understand that, realistically speaking, aren't the Philistines and the Israelites originally family through Noah? I said, you know what, Satan? You, you, you make a little sense there, boy. You make a little sense there. So why was it one family standing against the next and then he both defied? He said, Mr. Snow, you didn't see the world being corrupt since then. Right? He said, you ain't see the world has been corrupt since then. Right? I said, all right. But let me watch. He said, watch how screw up Saul even screw up. Saul owned son them. Everybody end up fighting up, attacking each other. The whole thing fell down because of the same jealousy and covetousness and power hungriness. Right? So I said, all right. He said, now David happened to come up now. Go through everything. Saul, Saul before Saul dead. Saul and I'll go and go against the own law. Saul, Saul tell people he chase out all the old man. Right? Oh, all the old like He chase everybody out to the kingdom. Says, yeah, I can't do magic. Talk to the dead. Do ba 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 ba. But then Saul, old age, Saul end up becoming a hypocrite. I'm running back to Obi lady. Or Obi man. I think it's an Obi lady. Who like lady, right? So Sal got to the old like Obi lady. And he said, Woman, you gotta call up my Uncle Samuel fast now, cause something still ain't making sense here. So the woman, she decide she can call Sal back from the dead. Sal come back from the dead. And Sal, uh, sorry, Samuel come back with the dead and look at Sal and say, Hey, you scunt. It's what you're waking me up for. You know what scunt you're doing here? You, you messing up the whole flow of things. You got to bear your chief now, buddy. And let me, let me go back. Because where I die here, got 70 virgins. That's where the first story come from about the 70 virgins when you're dead and you're gone. Right? Right? Edwin Thorne. Please understand, if you take this 100% seriously, you're going to run mad. Right? Good. When you see Daffy Duck in them, you, you, you just feel a rabbit can really go to Cucamonga? Tell me, when's the last time you saw a rabbit entering into Cucamonga? Tell me, though. Right? You telling me I'm a mad man. You're watching me. You must be more mad than me. But my question is, are you entertained with the story? Right? I ain't telling you nothing you never heard before, you know. I just give you the next man point of view. That is it. But if I'm wrong, tell me. And back it up with proof. That's all I see. Back it up. So, anyway, Samuel decide you can't pull me. You can't pull me back to this non-existent man on man story. I going back to God where I got my virgins. I good. 
Samuel Gani scored back to the dead. David had to come over. Eventually, David took over from Sal. And then David gone with his own wickedness, Scott. David finally become king, get everything he want. And watch how wicked David, wicked. David gonna go on the veranda. Ah. Oh. What my neighbor wife doing today? And that was David, you know. David was wicked, you know. Wicked bad. David can't be my neighbor. No way a man named David living next to me. Oh, oh by, by the way, to any resident in my housing scheme named David, please forgive me. It's just a joke, okay? Because I have some really good people named David. This is all part of a joke, okay? Please. Just in case people feel offended, right? Just saying. But since I ever read the story, I never lived next to a man named David in my life. Because, come on, my buddy. Oh, oh, you know how this story go. Pure, poor Uriah. Poor Uriah. He and all this stupidity too. No one he did. Right? But, but the funny thing is, right, is that the devil tell me, Everybody, he said, look, Mr. Snow, everybody God choosing is doing more wickedness than anything else. Right? So he said, just watch, I ain't talking like, man. Watch, watch, watch. From history, man, he chose Adam and even look what happened. Then the poor able body boy get killed. Right? Then, then all the Noah family end up turning into civilization and killing each other. Then now he got, he got Saul. Saul end up getting power hungry, pride. Saul end up chasing the next one. Right? And it keeps going. Michelle, yes, you are absolutely right. You have to understand the story to be entertained. I guarantee a lot more people can go and read the Bible today. I guarantee a lot more people can go read the Bible today. Because you're going to read it from a different perspective. Right? So in a sense, I'm still doing my part. I'm sending more people to understand the Bible. I don't know if this is the exact way you wanted me to do it, God, but it is you that allowed the devil to come and plead his case in front of me. Yeah, so nonetheless, it got to happen. Right? So, you know, we got on here. Poor Bathsheba, cursed with beauty and infidelity. Because the reality is, Uriah's wife didn't even like he. She wanted money, man. She didn't want the poor soldier. She wanted the rich king. Because she knew exactly what she was doing when her husband was out of the house on the battle line, going on top of she rooftop and bathing Scott. You know that? She didn't look in. That was her version of social media. She roofed up. First instance of a selfie. Ever. Bathsheba was the first selfie goddess before Kim Kardashian. Eh? Uh -huh. I'm telling you straight. I wonder how she catch David. Can you imagine how she would have? Think about it. That man is a king. That man could have seen plenty, plenty nice things. That girl had to, hey, yeah, I think it's joke. I, you could picture Bathsheba on top of the rooftop. Wait, wait, David, there. Wait, David, there. Splash. Splash. Poor David getting hypnotized. And then, boom. Poor Uriah get blown. Get massive blow. That was it. Instagram destroyed life. 
Facebook destroy life, rooftop social media destroy life from that day forward. Social media be doomed to disappointment. And tell me if on a day like today, you could allow you man for watch Bathsheba on social media without getting nervous. Ladies and gentlemen, tell me which one of y'all never check your man phone yet. Tell me which one of y'all never check your man phone yet. It's because of David and Bathsheba. Uh -huh. So the devil say. Okay? But like I said, I'm listening to his story all the time. Right? Ladies and gentlemen, this episode here shall be to be continued until tomorrow morning. Give us a thumbs up if you like this version of history or if you find it incredibly entertaining. But I do believe based on, based on what the devil has been telling me, I do believe that this story makes a certain degree of sense. And he said, Mr. Snow, this is where... I will challenge you. I said, what do you mean? He said, you said you are a transparent person. I said, yes. He said, you wish to be a fair person. I said, yes. He said, well then, if you cannot see the fairness or the unfairness in how humanity has treated me and judged me for their own sins, then you would not be what you claim to be. This is why I came to you, Mr. Snow, to plead my case. Ladies and gentlemen, based on what you've heard so far, does the devil need an attorney? We shall continue this tomorrow. Take care. God bless you. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.